Hello, I'm Kajal Devani, Director of Science and Technology at the Canadian Ingus Association. I have the privilege of bringing new tools and technology to our members. And over the last decade, genomic technology has advanced a lot. So I'm happy to give you an update on our use of genomic technology today. Today, we use a high density panel called Angus GS. The Angus GS panel has approximately 80,000 SNP markers that are specifically selected for Angus genetics. The primary value in the Angus GS test is to incorporate the test results or genotype into our monthly Angus 1 genetic evaluations. Our Angus 1 genetic evaluations are done at Angus Genetics Inc. or AGI in partnership with the American Angus Association. Here's Dr. Steve Miller from AGI with some background on genomic technology. Hello, I am Steve Miller, Director of Genetic Research here at the American Angus Association. I am in my office here on Frederick Avenue in sunny St. Joseph, Missouri, and I've been involved in the genetic evaluation of beef cattle now for over 25 years. Here in St. Joe, I get the privilege to work with one of the world's most powerful beef genetic databases to build tools to empower our breeders to attain their goals. One of my jobs here is to help give our breeders confidence in the tools we provide, and today I'm going to tell you about one of those tools. Every day, Angus breeders face a challenge as old as animal breeding itself, identifying the best animals with superior genetic merit. But here's the challenge. An animal's true genetic merit is not revealed until that animal has progeny. And between an animal's birth and the arrival of its progeny, a number of important decisions must be made. Who makes the cut to be a breeding candidate? Who will sell his herd bulls and for how much? And who should go to be collected for AI versus sold into a commercial herd? Without the certainty that comes from progeny on the ground, these vital decisions can only be made with a prediction based on a combination of indicators or traits available early in the animal's life. As breeders know, these predictions are called expected progeny differences or EPDs. The classic EPD, whose predecessor was first introduced in the breed in 1972, combined these different indicators giving each its appropriate way to provide the most accurate prediction of future differences in progeny performance. Although a successful tool that breeders have adopted to make effective change in the breed, there are still limitations. For instance, any breeder who has bred the same bull to the same cow twice can attest to the impact of parents on an animal's genetic merit. But there's a lot more to that story. Every time a sire and dam are mated, the breeder plays the lotto game and may end up with a calf that is superior to or inferior to its parents. And the breeder doesn't know for sure which animal has inherited a good or bad shake. Performance measures available at an early age provide the first indication of what this shake might be. But each performance measure only correlates to the animal's true genetic merit to a certain degree. And so this classic EPD with both parent data and performance measures gives breeders more confidence than ever before, but still nowhere near the certainty that comes with progeny. In the past decade, livestock breeding and all species went through a major revolution, a revolution driven by genomics. Genomics addresses the same challenge of determining whether or not an animal inherited a good or bad shake from its parents. This is accomplished by combining performance measures on animals with genotypes. We've always known that, like previous tools, genomic predictions were not perfect. And so in order to determine just how useful they are, we ran some tests. We took 178 2015 and 2016 born sires that had 25 or more progeny with performance records and ran classic EPDs that included just their progeny performance data. We then wound back the clock on the evaluation to see how these bulls would have scored before they had their progeny using first only parent data, then parent data plus performance, and then parent data plus genomics. The classic EPD using just their parent information predicted progeny results at 40% predictability. Adding in the performance measure raised this to 44%. But an EPD based only on parents plus genomics without performance data had a predictability of 65%. We tested other traits and results were similar. 
every time the genomically enhanced EPD was clearly better at predicting progeny than the classic performance-based EPD. The challenge facing breeders hasn't changed. They still must predict what a young animal's breeding worth will turn out to be when its progeny arrive. The parents still provide the baseline for an animal and the performance measures are still the raw ingredient in helping to predict this future progeny performance. But now genomics is adding significantly more accuracy to these early predictions. These predictions are still not perfect, but we want to help our breeders make the absolute best decision possible. And the research shows us that right now the most powerful tool we have is driven by genomics. So let's have a look at how to request an Angus GS test for your animals. The request needs to start at the association. You can complete the DNA test request form. Identify the animal and type of test you want to do. In this case, you want to select the Angus GS marker panel. You can also send us an email at registry at cdnangus.ca or call us at 1-888-571-3580 and tell us the animal and which test you want to do. We will set up the specific test request for the specific animal for you and send you your lab requisition form that looks like this. This can be printed and submitted with your DNA sample to the lab. If you have any questions about taking DNA samples, we have a video with some information about that. Check it out on our new website. It's important to plan ahead for when you will want your Angus GS test results. The test turnaround time from the time that the sample arrives at the lab is 21 calendar days. Yes, that includes weekends because the lab works throughout the weekend as well. The deadline for data going into our monthly Angus One genetic evaluations is the 15th of the month. The results of the genetic evaluation will be posted after the first weekend of the following month. So if you look at this timeline, if you request your Angus GS test on CAF CAA1G, for example, on January 1st, you'd get your lab requisition sheets and send your DNA sample to the lab on January 2nd. The post will take a few days, so the lab receives the, the DNA sample that you sent on the 7th of January. The Angus GS tests will be ready on approximately January 28th. The next genetic evaluation is the February evaluation. We're well in time for the February 15th deadline. The results of that genetic evaluation will be published on March 2nd. So if you need your G Angus GS test results back for a specific date, like your sale or um, planning some breeding, then please plan ahead. You can see from this timeline, you will need to request the test and submit your DNA sample well in advance of the date that you actually need the results. Once you do get your results, let's have a look at what's included. The first item of value included in the Angus GS test is parentage verification. The second type of results you'll receive is your genomic percentile rank table. This will rank your tested animals against all the other tested animals in the CAA and American Angus database, which is approximately 1 million animals to date. The percentile rank table comes with a help page that guides you with interpreting the results. But let's look at one example here. This animal is in the top 35 of all tested animals for docility. That means this animal has the genetic potential to be more docile than the average Angus animal. Conversely, the animal is in the bottom 72 percentile for marbling. What this is saying is that this animal is going to have lower than average genetic potential to develop marbling. The genomic percentile ranks are actually not the latest technology tool, and they're based on a biased population and use older methodology. Which brings us to the principal value and advantage of the Angus GS testing, the genomically enhanced EPD. 
you heard Dr. Miller talk about how much more reliable a GEPD is over a traditional EPD. This is where the Angus GS test makes an impact. The tests allow us to calculate EPDs with higher accuracy. It allows us to calculate EPDs for cattle that don't have a phenotype on file, like older animals, imported animals from another herd book globally, young animals, or animals purchased from a non-performance recording herd. There are traits that are expensive or difficult to measure like carcass quality, high immune response, feed efficiency, and genomic technology allows us to apply phenotypes measured on a few animals to generate EPDs for animals that have been genotyped but not measured for these traits. The way that we do this is called single step methodology. The way our previous genetic evaluations worked for decades was using pedigree information, like the image to the left, to generate a pedigree or matrix or relationship matrix. So animals four and five who are full sibs in the old system would be assumed to be related and share exactly 50% of their genetics. After having genotyped thousands of full sibs, we know that actually that's not accurate. In fact, full sibs can share between 37 to 62 percent of their genetics. In the case of animals 8 and 6, by pedigree, we would say that there's no relationship between the animals. But if we compare their genotypes, there is likely some relationship. So with single step technology, if we have feed intake data on animal eight, we can apply a portion of it to animal six as well if the genotype shows that there's some commonality between the two animals. The power of strengthening this relationship matrix means that we finally have mathical methodology to calculate more accurate EPDs. Let's have a look at exactly how much improved accuracy the Angus GS genomic panel can give us in terms of, in terms that are easier to appreciate, progeny equivalence. The Angus GS panel gives us as much information and added accuracy for the calculation of birth weight EPD as 26 progeny on file with birth weights. For an animal who hasn't been scored for docility or had any calves yet, the Angus GS panel gives us about 12 progeny worth of information for a docility score. For traits that need to be measured later in life, like milk or claw set and foot angle, the Angus GS panel gives us 36 progeny equivalents worth of data for milk and 10 for feet traits, so that we're able to predict the genetic merit for breeding animals sooner for these traits. So this is truly the value of genomic technology. In a way, the Angus GS test is a way for members to guarantee the pedigree and the EPDs of the animals tested because it verifies the pedigree information with parentage verification and it gives you more accurate EPDs and it gives you EPDs on all the traits that we like to predict. The Angus GS is a newer version of the bovine HD50K panel. This is a question we frequently get from members who ask what's the difference between Angus GS and the 50K test. So it's a newer version of a panel. It has more SNP markers on it, as we said, 80,000 versus 50,000. And as we find markers that are pertinent to Angus genetics specifically, they are added to the panel. Another question we get from members is which animals should I Angus GS test? We recommend that you Angus GS test animals that you want more information on. You already know all the calls 
you're not going to keep an animal with bad feet no matter what her EPDs say. So if you did your first round of culling based on phenotypic information, we recommend you test what's left. Thank you so much for listening today. Have a great day.